into evil at a sunny day. Come up, Daedalus. Come up, you fearful Jesuit. <laughs> Daedalus! For this, O oh dearly beloved, is the genuine Christine. Body and soul, and blood and wounds. Slow music, please. Silence, all. Tell me, Mulligan. Yes, my love. How long is Haynes going to stay in this town? God, isn't he dreadful? He thinks you're not a gentleman. God, these bloody English. Bursting with money and indigestion. <laughs> because he comes from Oxford. You know, Daedalus, he can't make you out. If he stays here, I'm leaving. Hey, let me put on your nose rag to wipe my razor. <laughs> the Bard's nose rag. A new art color for our Irish poets. It's not green. You can almost taste it, can't you? My aunt thinks you killed your mother. You could have knelt down, damn it, Daedalus, when your dying mother asked you. Think of your mother, begging you with her last breath to kneel down and pray for her. You know, there's something sinister in you. Even a Jesuit education doesn't account for it. <laughs> ah, poor dog's body. Must give you another shirt and a few nose rags. How are the second-hand bridges? Thanks, I can't wear them. They're grey. He can't wear them. Etiquette is etiquette. He kills his mother, but he can't wear grey trousers. <laughs> Look at yourself, you dreadful bard. <laughs> what are you against me? Covered up. Do you remember the first day I went to your house after my mother's death? Your aunt asked who was in your room. What did I say? You said, it's only Daedalus whose mother is beastly dead. Did I say that? Well, what harm is that? What is death? You see them pop off every day in the hospital wards. Then we cut them into tripes in the dissection classes. It's a beastly thing and nothing else. You wouldn't kneel down to pray for your mother, and yet you sulk with me. It's absurd. I suppose I did say it. I didn't mean to offend the memory of your mother. I wasn't thinking of the offense to my mother. Of what, then? Of the offense to me. Hm. An impossible person. Are you there, Mulligan? I'm coming. Yes. Don't mope over it all day. Give up the moody brooding. Haynes wants his breakfast. He thinks you're very clever. Touch him for a quid, will you? I get paid this morning. From the school, how much? Four quid? Give us one. We'll have a glorious drunk. In nomine patris et fili et spiritus sancti. I see, Mulligan, you do make strong tea, don't you? Yeah, when I mix tea, I mix tea. As old Mother Grogan said. And when he makes water, I makes water. I so do. I do. This is tea. So I do, Mrs. Cal. So she. Be gobs, says Mrs. Cal. God send you don't make them in the one pot. <laughs> yeah. Put that in your book instead of Stephen's Raven. That's folk art. Mm. Seriously, Daedalus, I'm stony broke. Hurry out to the school where you teach the boneheads. Bring us back some of the money, won't we? Tonight the bars must drink and junk it. Yes. Ireland expects that every man this day will do his duty. Mm. I have to visit your national library today. But first our swim. Is this the day for your monthly wash, Dedalus? <laughs> the unclean bard makes a point of washing once a month. <laughs> All Ireland is washed by the Gulf Stream. 
<laughs> I intend to use some of your sayings in my book on the Irish, if you'll let me. Would I make any money by it? Oh, I don't know, I'm sure. Well, you hear his theory on Hamlet, Haynes. <laughs> Come out, Daedalus. They've eaten everything we've left out of all. What is your idea of Hamlet? No. No, I'm not equal to it. You couldn't manage it under three pints, could you? <laughs> it's quite simple. He proves by algebra that Hamlet's grandson is Shakespeare's grandfather, and that he himself is the ghost of his own father. What? He himself? The sacred pint alone can unbind the tongue of Didymus. <laughs> I read a theological interpretation of Hamlet somewhere. The father and the son idea. The son striving to be atoned with the father. Young fellow, but have you heard me mother's a Jew? Me father's a boy. <laughs> we oughtn't to laugh, I suppose. He's rather blasphemous. What does he call it? The ballad of Joke and Jesus. Ah, uh, you've heard it before. Three times a day after meals. Uh, you aren't a believer, I suppose. I mean, a believer in the narrow sense of the word. There's only one sense of the word, it seems to me. Yes, of course. Either you believe or you don't, isn't it? He who stealeth from the poor lendeth to the Lord. Thus spake Zarathustra. Personally, I can never stomach the idea of a personal God. You don't stand for that, I suppose. You behold in me a horrible example of free thought. An Irishman must feel that way, I dare say. We feel in England we've treated you rather unfairly. It seems history is to blame. Of course, I'm a Britisher, and I feel as one. I don't want my country to fall into the hands of the Jews. I'm afraid that's our national problem just now. Paul D, hurry up with that tea, I'm parched. What a time you were. Who are the letters for? Shall I pull the curtains open? Mm. I do. Who's the letter from? The place is Boynton. He's, um... He's bringing the, uh, the programme for the concert over here this afternoon. At four o'clock. What are you singing? Oh, La Cheetah M and Love's Old Sweet Song. Do you, uh, do you want the window open a little? What time's Paddy Dignam's funeral? Oh, so it's 11, I think. I didn't see the papers. There's a word I wanted to ask you. Here, what does this mean? Metempsychosis? Yes. Who's he when he was at home? Uh, metempsychosis. Uh, that's Greek. It was from the Greek. It means the uh, transmigration of souls. Oh, rocks. Tell us in plain words. The monster Maffi desisted and flung his victim from him with an oath. Did you finish it? Yes, there's nothing smutty in it. Is she in love with the first fellow all the time? No, I didn't read it. Do you want another one? Yeah. Get me another of Paul de Cox. <laughs> nice name he has. Reincarnation. That's the word. You see, some people believe that we go on living in another body after death. You know, that we've lived before. Some people say that they remember their past lives. There's a smell of burn. Did you leave anything on the fire? A kidney. Hockey!
Uh, Mr. Deasy told me to write these all out again and show them to you, sir. Can you do them yourself? No, sir. Six, and carry one. Ignorant and futile. Yet somebody loved him. Bore him in her arms and in her heart. But for her, the race of the world would have trampled him underfoot. A squashed, boneless snail. Yet she loved his weak, watery blood drained from her own. Do you understand them now? Can you do the second for yourself? Like him was I, these sloping shoulders, this gracelessness. My childhood bends beside me. They're very simple. Yes, sir, thanks. Hockey, Sergeant. Roll on, Mr. Deasy's calling you. Ah, there you are. Hockey, my sergeant. Uh, Mr. Dillard, a sergeant, financial settlement. Two, three. Handy little things, what? Three and twelve. Thank you, sir. Don't carry it like that. You'll lose it. You just buy one of these. Mine would be often empty. Because you don't save. Do you know what is the proudest boast of the Englishman? I paid my way. I paid my way. I never borrowed a shilling in my life. Can you feel that? Can you? At the moment, no. I knew you couldn't. But one day you must feel it. We're a generous people, but we must also be just. I fear those big words which make us so unhappy. You think me an old Tory. I have rebel blood in me, too. For all king's sons, all Irish. Alas. Mr. Dedalus, you can do me a favor with some of your literary friends. I have here a letter for the press. It's about foot and mouth disease. It just looks good. Right. May I trespass on your valuable space, foot and mouth, to come to the point? I don't mince words, do I? In every sense of the word, take the bull by the horn, thanking you for the hospitality of your collar. I want that printed. Though I'm surrounded by difficulties, by intrigues, by... Mark my words, Mr. Dedalus. England is in the hands of the Jews. As sure as we're standing here, the Jew merchants are already at their work of destruction. A merchant is one who buys cheap and sells dear Jew or Gentile, is he not? They sinned against the light. Who has not? What do you mean? History is a nightmare from which I'm trying to awake. The ways of the Creator are not our ways. All history moves towards one great goal, the manifestation of God. That is God. What? A shout in the street. I foresee that you will not remain very long at this work. Maybe you can have those published at once. I know two editors slightly. I'll let you know tomorrow. Good morning, sir. Oh, Mr. Dedalus. Ireland, they say, has the honor of being the only country that never persecuted the Jews. Do you know that? No. And do you know why? Why, sir? Because she never let them in. She never let them in, that's why. <laughs> Hello, Bloom. <laughs> What's the best news? Is that it is? Show us a minute. I want to see about that French horse that's running in the gold cup today. Where the bugger is it? Is there any, uh, no trouble, I hope? I see you, uh... Huh? Oh, no. <laughs> no Paddy Deacon. The funeral's today. Ah, to be sure, the poor fella, so it is. Half a mo, half a mo, maximum the second. Wife well, I suppose. Oh, yeah, tipped up. She's singing the big affair in Belfast on the 25th. Oh, is that so? Who's getting it up? Well, it's a kind of tour. You know, there's been a committee performed. It's boiling, mostly. You know, blazes. Oh, boiling's getting it up. Oh, well, that's good news. You can keep it. Oh, hang on, half a mile. That's got gold cup. Wait. Uh, throw it away when you're finished. What's that? Throw it away when you're finished. I was just going to. Thanks. I'll risk it.
ineluctable modality of the visible. At least that at no more. Thought through my eyes. Signatures of all things I am here to read. Sea spawn and sea rack. The nearing tide. That rusty boot. Shut your eyes and see. I am getting on nicely in the dark. My ash sword hangs at my side. Tap with it. They do. Sound solid. Open your eyes now. I will. One moment. Am I walking into eternity along Sandy Mount Strand? Has all vanished since? If I open, and I'm forever in the black diaphane. Basta. I will see if I can see. There all the time without you. And ever shall be. World without end. One of her sisterhood lugged me squealing into life. Creation from nothing. Spouse and helpmate of Adam Cadmon. Eva, naked Eve. She had no navel. Gaze. Belly without blemish. Bulging big. A buckler of taut vellum. No. White heaped corn. Orient and immortal. Standing from everlasting to everlasting. Womb of sin. Wombed in sin darkness I was too. Made, not begotten. By them, the man with my voice and my eyes and a ghost woman with ashes on her breath. They clasped and sundered, did the coupler's will. I mustn't forget Deasy's letter for the press. And after? The pub. Half past twelve. By the way, go easy with that money like a good young imbecile. Yes, I must. My Latin Quarter hat. God, we simply must dress the character. Ah, uh -huh. just say in the most natural tone, when I was in Paris, boule miche, I used to... Rich booty you brought back. A blue French telegram. Curiosity to show. Mother dying. Come home. Father. Mulligan's aunt thinks you killed your mother. The cold, domed room of the tower waits. I will not sleep there when this night comes. Mulligan saved men from drowning, and you shake at a cur's yelping. Would you do what he did? A boat would be near. A life boy. Would you or would you not? The truth. Spit it out. I would want to. I would try. I am not a strong swimmer. Water. Cold. Soft. Soft eyes. Soft, soft, soft hand. I am lonely here. is that word known to all men. I am quiet here alone. Sad to touch, touch me. Shut the door, there's a hurricane blowing. Uh, it's about this out of keys, Mr. Crawford. He wants two keys at the top. We can do that. Have you the design? Yeah, well, I can get it in the library. It was in a Kilkenny newspaper. Oh, we can do that. Let him give us three months renewal of the contract. Yeah, well, I was just going to run over to Bachelor's Walk to get it. Be gone. The world is before you. Back in no time. Who wants a sure thing for the Gold Cup race? Scepter is the horse. And trays, maize and pants.
Who's this from? Mr. Garrett Deasy. Good day, Stephen. Good day. Foot and mouth disease. The letter is not mine. Mr. Garrett Deasy asked me to. Oh, I know him. I know his wife, too. The bloodiest old tatter God ever made. By Jesus, he had the foot and mouth disease and no mistake. I want you to write something for me. Something with a bite in it. Foot and mouth disease, all balls. Put us all into it. Father, Son and Holy Ghost and Jake McCarthy. All right, I'll put it in. Gentlemen, may I suggest that the company do now adjourn? To which particular boozing shed? My vote is Moody's. Hello, Leopold. Josie Breen, how are you? Huh? No use complaining. How's Molly these times? In the pink? And you're lord and master? Don't be talking. He's a caution to the rattlesnakes. You know what he did last night? What? Woke me up at midnight. Said the ace of spades was walking up the stairs. The ace of spades? Has Minnie Purefoy had a baby yet? Well, I just called to ask on the way in. Is she over it? She's in the maternity hospital in Hollis Street. Three days she's been bad now. I'm sorry to hear that. Mmm, very stiff birth. So the nurse tells me. Poor thing. Oh, there he is now. I brought him his lunch. Remember me to Molly, won't you? I will. Give us a touch, Poldy. God, I'm dying for it. I was happier then. 28, I was. She was 23 when we left Raymond Terrace. Something changed after Rudy. I could never like it again. Can't bring back time. How's the old heart, citizen? Never better, O'Connor. What, Gary O? Are we going to win, eh? <laughs> Ask us race results in yet. The gold cup. Not yet. Not till four. Four o'clock. After a win in a canter. I plunged a bit. Two quid. Fancy of a lady friend of mine. How about paying our respects to our departed friend Dignam? Paddy Dignam. Dead. Cuckold. 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 What time is that? Four. I'm late. Listen, I seen him just about five minutes ago. He's no more dead than you are. Maybe so. Took the liberty of burying him this morning, anyhow. Good Christ. Tigna. You know, I could have swore that I saw... Did you say the Christ was good? Oh, uh, well, I beg your parsnips. Is it a good Christ to take away poor little Willie Tigna? Well, he's... He's over all these troubles, anyhow. He's a bloody ruffling, I say. Take away poor little Willie Dignam. Paddy Dignam. <coughs> you won't eat you. Uh, oh, day, gentlemen. Uh, has Martin Cunningham been in yet? No, no, what do you have? Oh, oh sorry. Uh, no, nothing for me, thanks. No, I, I couldn't drink any more. Uh, I could take one of those cigars. Give us one of your prime stinkers, Terry. Nothing. Okay. Afraid he'll bite you. No. Bloom's afraid Gary Owen will take his leg for a lamppost. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you sure you won't have anything? Ah, no thanks, not for me. No, as a matter of fact, I just wanted to meet uh, Martin Cunningham about this insurance of poor Dignams. Uh, Martin wants me to go around to the house with him. Uh, uh, are you going around there? Uh, yes. But will you, will, will you tell Mrs. Dignam from me that I'm very sorry for her trouble and all, and about the funeral, and tell her that I said, that anyone that ever knew him always said there wasn't a truer or kinder than, than poor little Willie that's dead. And tell her... Yeah, yeah, that, yes, I'll be glad to. Oh. I, uh, I hear Bylan's running a concert tour now, up in the north. He is, isn't he? Who? Oh, oh yes, uh, that's quite true. Ah, it's, uh, on the summer tour, it's just a holiday. Mrs. Bloom is the bright particular star, isn't she? Uh, my wife, uh, she's singing, yes. Oh, I, I, I think it'll be a success, too. He's an excellent man to organize, you know, excellent. Finnehan, 
Do you look like somebody who lost a bob and found a tanner? The gold cup race. You throw away took it. A rank outsider at 20 to 1. And the rest nowhere. Down the glen. 20 to 1. Oh, yeah. oh well, such is life in an outhouse. Throw away. Pray of tea, thy name is Scepter. Persecution. The history of the world is full of it. Perpetuating national hatred among nations. Do you even know what a nation is? Yes. What is it? A nation. Well, a nation is uh, the same people living in the same place. Because if that's all, I'm a nation. I've been living in the same place for the past five years. <laughs> are also, uh, you know, living in different places. That covers my case. <laughs> what is your nation, if I may ask? Ireland. I was born here. Ireland. Uh, show us over the drink that, Joe. Uh, which is which? Well, no, that's mine. As the devil said of the dead policeman. Now, I belong to a race to this. Hated and persecuted. Also now, at this very moment, this instant, sold off in Morocco at auctions like slaves or cattle. Are you talking about the new Jerusalem? I'm talking about injustice. Right. Stand up to them with force like men. That's no good. Force. Hatred. That's not, that's not life. A man, a woman. Insult and hatred. Everybody knows that it's the very opposite to that. That's really life. What? I mean the opposite, to hate. Yeah, well, I'd I better be going over to the courthouse. Look, if uh, Martin Cunningham comes in here, uh, say I'll be back in a moment, will you? You apostle to the Gentiles. Universal love. Well, isn't that what we're told? Love your neighbors? That's shady. Beg of me, neighbors, his motto. Love my... Uh... Well, Joe, you have very good health and song. Uh, more power, citizen. Yeah, good luck there. The blessing of God of Mary and Patrick. I know where he's gone. Who? Bloom. The courthouse is a lie. He had a few bob and throw away, and he's gone round to collect the shekels. Phantom Lines told me Bloom gave him the very same tip this morning. He's the only man in Dublin that has it. A dark horse. He's a bloody dark horse himself. Hello, Joe. Uh, where's Bloom? Where is he? Defrauding widows and orphans. The new messiah to Ireland. Island of saints and sages. Ah, well, they're still waiting for their redeemer. That matters all we. Yeah, every male that's born, they think it may be their messiah. But every Jew is in a tall state of excitement, I believe, until he knows if he's a father or a mother. Oh, be God. You should have known Bloom before that son of his that died was born. I met him one day in the South City markets, buying stacks of baby food, six weeks before the wife was delivered. You call that a man? I wonder did he ever get over it. Well, there was a son born anyhow. <laughs> and who does he suspect? Charity to the neighbor. Oh, there you are. Just over the courthouse looking for you. Oh, we're ready now. Huh? Oh, it tells oh. me, you. He must have won about five quid. Oh, man. Dean Scott. Why is the drink itself? Devil a sweet fear. Here's a Jew for you. All for number one. Cute as a shithouse rat. Uh, I think your pardon. Oh, no, it's mine. Oh, don't tell anyone. It's a secret. It's a secret. <laughs> Mendelssohn was a Jew, and Karl Marx, and Mercadante, and Spinoza. And the Saviour was a Jew, and his father was a Jew, your God. He had no father, that'll do you now. I'm driving on. Who's God? What? Well, his uncle was a Jew, your God was a Jew, and Christ was a Jew like me. Brings you to our little veil of tears, not. Oh no, no, no. Uh, Josie Breen told me Minna Purefoy was still in labour. Has she had? Oh, the poor thing, poor thing. Woman's lot is not a happy one, you know. Oh, indeed, that it's not. Mr. Bloom, how are you? Ah, oh, hello, doctor. How are you? Tip top, thank you. Could I see her? Do you think I just dropped by? Uh, let me ask, doctor. She's very near, very near, poor thing. You want to uh, don't trouble yourself, nurse. I mean, no I... trouble, Leopold. Well, you must come and have a bottle of stove with us. We're just having a bit of a tea. Oh.
gentlemen, please keep it down. This is a house of healing. Very well. Silence all. Shut your bleeding gobs, will you? Maestro. Life presents a dismal picture filled with misery and gloom. Father has an angel stricter, mother's got and fallen womb. <laughs> Cousin Casper's been transported for a homosexual crime. And my sister has aborted for the forty second time. <laughs> Uncle Charlie's been castrated, and he very rarely smiles. Mine's a dismal occupation, crushing ice for grandpa's Silence, silence, silence. Quiet, oh. The priestified bard will now perform for your particular entertainment. Right out, son. Adoro te devote, latens deitas. Jesu Christ figuris, stick it up your arm. <laughs> Upstairs. Have a care, Stephen. <laughs> it's no bold daddy himself. He jabbered <laughs> over the roof. Gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. What's wrong with him? <laughs> the Jesuits, don't you know? They drove his wits astray with visions of hell. He will never be a poet. That's his tragedy. What's yours? What's that? I'm blue moly for the want of a pint. Throws over that bottle here, Lynch. Have you been doing that all night? Quite. Come on, Dedalus. Haynes wants to leave. Uh, he's not well. Nonsense. The bard must home to sleep. Yes. He's out there having a little Celtic twilight. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dedalus. Give us the key now. <laughs> I'm here till I tell you. Maidenhead inside. Er omnes ad quos pervenit aqua ista. Trinity medical students. All prick and no pence. Ten shillings a maidenhead. Fresh thing never been touched. Any good in your mind? With all my worldly goods, I thee and thou. You did that. I hate you. I? When? You're, you're dreaming. When you saw all the secrets of me bottom drawer. Oh, dirty married man, I love you for doing that to me. Leopold, you down here in the haunts of sin. Shh, not so loud. Don't give me away. Uh, well, this is an interesting quarter. Rescue of the fallen woman Magdalen Asylum. I'm the secretary. Now, don't tell a big fib. Oh, wait till I tell Molly. Would you like me perhaps to embrace you just for the fraction of a second? Oh, you rook. You ought to see yourself. For old sake's sake. I just met a square party. A big smingling of our different little conjugals. You know, I've always had a soft corner for you. Oh, glory, Alice. You do look a holy show. Josie Powell you wear then. The prettiest Deb in Dunn. Do you remember the old Christmas night, the party? And you were the lion of the night with your serial comic recitations. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Ireland, home and beauty. The dear dead days beyond recall. Oh! Love's old sweet song. We sat together on the staircase under the mistletoe. Took a splinter out of your hand. 
Lacciderem la mano. Oh, you're hot. You're scalding. When you marry Breen, I'll never forgive you for that. All you meant to me then. Oh, man, it's breaking me. Why didn't you kiss the spot to make it well? You want to. Molly's best friend. How could you? Are you going far, queer fella? Hey, how's your middle leg, darling? Come here till I stiffen it for you. Pass on the act. Commit no nuisance. Come, name and address. Uh, yes, of course. Um, Dr. Bloom, uh, dental surgeon. You've heard of Von Bloom Pasha. Uh, Owns half of Austria, Egypt. That's my cousin. Proof? Allow me. Uh, my club is the junior army and navy. Profession or trade? Yes, well, I follow a literary occupation. Uh, author, journalist. Uh, I've connections with the British and Irish press. If you ring up... Hello? Irish Journal and Weekly Arsewiper here. You which? Who? Bloom? Never heard of him. The People versus Bloom. Call the woman Driscoll. Mary Driscoll, scullery maid. Are you one of the unfortunate class? I'm not a bad one. I bear a respectable character, and I had to leave his employ on to his carrions on. What do you charge him with? He made a certain suggestion, but I thought more of myself, poor as I am. I treated you white. I gave you mementos. Smart Emerald Gartus, far above your station. Incautiously, I took your part when you were accused of pilfering. Now, play cricket. This God is looking down on me this day if I ever laid a hand to them oysters. The offence complained of. Did something happen? He surprised me in the rear of the premises, Your Honour, when the missus was out shopping with a request for a safety pin. He held me, and I was discoloured in four places as a result. And he interfered twice with me clothing. Was she counter-assaulted? I remonstrated with him, your lord, and he remarked, Keep it quiet. <laughs> Order in court! Order in court! Order in court! The accused will now make a bogus statement. Not guilty. <laughs> place for indecent levity at the expense of an erring mortal disguised in liquor. I put it to you that intimacy did not occur, and the offence complained of by Driscoll that a virtue was solicited was not repeated. There have been cases of shipwreck and somnambulism in my client's family. He wants to go straight. He's down on his luck at present owing to the mortgaging of his extensive property in faraway Asia Minor. The young person was treated by defendant as if she were his own daughter. I shall call rebutting evidence to prove up to the hilt that the hidden hand is again at the old game. When in doubt, persecute Bloom. I suggest that you will do the handsome thing. Penny in the pound. Arrest him, Constable. He sent me an anonymous letter. I have it still. He said that he had seen my peerless globes as I sat in a box at the Theatre Royal. I deeply inflamed him, he said. He offered to send me through the post a work of fiction by Monsieur Paul de Kock entitled Sweets of Sin. Also to me, yes, it is the same objectionable person. He addressed me in several handwritings with fulsome compliments as a Venus in furs. He lauded most extravagantly my nether extremities, my swelling calves and silk hose drawn up to the limit, and eulogized glowingly my other hidden treasures in priceless lace, which he said he could conjure up. He urged me to defile the marriage bed and to commit adultery at the earliest possible opportunity. Also me, this plebeian Don Juan, observed me from behind a car and he sent me in double envelopes an obscene photograph such as are sold after dark on Paris Boulevard. 
insulting to any lady. It represents a partially nude senorita, frail and lovely, his wife, as he solemnly assured me, taken by him from nature, practicing illicit intercourse with a muscular torero, evidently a blackguard. And he urged me to do likewise, to misbehave, to sin with officers of a garrison. He implored me to soil his letter in an unspeakable manner and to chastise him as he richly deserves, to bestride and ride him and give him a most vicious horse whipping. Me too. Me too. Me, me too. too. By the God above, oh. I'll scourge oh. this pigeon little cur as long as I can stand oh. over him. Here again, I love the danger. Ah, and his breeches well, the upstart. Right, the stars and stripes on it. There's no excuse for him. He's a married man. All these people. I only meant the spanking idea. A warm, tingling glow without a fusion. Refined virtue to stimulate the circulation. Well, by the living God, you'll get the surprise of your life now, believe me. You've lashed the dormant tigress in my nature into fury. Make him smart, Hannah, dear. Give him ginger. Crash the mongrel within an inch of his life. Cut of nine tails. Gailed him. Vivisect him. Cold, oh, chivalry. It was your ambrosial beauty. Forget, forgive, kismet. Let me off this once. Don't do so on any account, Mrs. Jolboys. He should be soundly trounced. Do no such thing. Pig dog. And always was since he was popped. To dare address me. I'll flog him black and blue in the public streets. He's a well-known cuckold. Take down his trousers without loss of time. Come here, sir. Quick. Whereas Leopold Bloom of number seven, Agnes Street, is a well-known dynamite of forger, bigamous, board, and a cuckold. He has declared a public nuisance to the citizens of Dublin. I will put an end to this white slave traffic and rid Dublin of this odious pest. Scandalous. Let him be taken from the dock where he now stands and detained in Mountjoy prison, and there to be hanged by the neck until he is dead. Therein fail not at your peril, for the Lord have mercy on your soul. Who will hang Judas Iscariot? Me? Yeah, you. He's inside with his friend, Bella Collins. You could go farther or fare worse. Are you his father? No, not I. You're both in black. That little rosy any tickles tonight. How's the nuts? Offside. Curiously, there to the right. <laughs> Heavier, I suppose. One in a million, my tailor says. <laughs> I thought you were of good stock by your accent. Are you a Dublin girl? No bloody fear. I'm English. Got a fag. I rarely smoke, dear. Cigar now and then. Childish device. You know the mouth can be better used than with a cylinder of rank weed. Oh, go on. Make a stump speech of it. Our buccaneering capitalists. What wreck they? Machines is their cry. Labor-saving apparatuses, supplanters, manufactured monsters for mutual murder. Pre-produced by capitalists, lusting upon the prostituted labor. The poor man stars cry they. <laughs> Three times three for the Lord Mayor of Dublin. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. For the honor of God. And is that Bloom? There goes famous Bloom, now the world's greatest reformer. All that man has seen and done. A classic face. He's got the forehead of a thinker. I here present your undoubted emperor, president, and king chairman, the most serene and very puissant ruler of the realm. God save Leopold the First. God save Leopold the First. Thanks, somewhat eminent sir. 
Will you, your power, cause law and mercy to be executed in all your judgments in Ireland and the lands thereunto adjoining? So may the Creator deal with me. All this I promise to do. Gaudium magnum annuncio vobis habemus carnificem. Leopold, Patrick, Andrew, David, George, be thou crowned. I do become a liege man of life and limb to earthly worship. My subjects, we hereby announce that we have this day repudiated our former spouse and have bestowed our royal hand upon the Princess Selene. The splendor of the night. Prince Ox, you are a credit to your country, sir. He's a man like Ireland wants. Uh, my beloved subjects, a new day is about to dawn. I, Bloom, tell thee verily, it is even now at hand. Yea, on the word of a Bloom, ye shall ere long enter into the golden city that is to be the new Bloom Usalem in the Nova Hibernia of the future. Little father, little father, take a hand from Polish, take a hand from Polish, take a hand from Polish. Alephet Gimel Kosher Yom Kippur Bene Brit, Meshuka. You remember me, Sir Leo? I'm sending around a dozen bottles of still for the missus. You have the advantage of me. Lady Bloom accepts no presents. This is indeed a festivity. You call it a festivity? I call it a sacrament. I stand for the reform of municipal morals and the plain Ten Commandments. New world for old. Union of all. Jew, Muslim, Gentile. Free money, free love, and a free lay church in a free lay state. A free fox in a free hen roost. Mixed races and mixed marriage. What about mixed bathing? He's a Episcopalian, anything Arian, seeking to overthrow our holy faith. You beast, you abominable person. Give us a tune, Bloom, one of the old sweet songs. I vowed I would never leave her. She turned out a cruel to save her. With the tune, lum tune, lum tune, I aim. Good old Bloom, there's nobody like him all the same. He's Irish, man. He employs a mechanical device to frustrate the sacred ends of nature. Fellow Christians and anti-Bloomites, the man called Bloom is from the roots of hell, a fiendish libertine, a worshipper of the Scarlet Woman, the stake, faggots, and boiling oil off of him. Caliban! Lynch him! Roast him! He's as bad as Parnell. This is midsummer madness. I'm guiltless. I call him my old friend, Dr. Malachy Mulligan, sex specialist, who will give medical testimony on my behalf. Dr. Bloom is bisexually abnormal. Born out of bedlock, hereditary epilepsy is present, a consequence of unbridled lust. There are marked symptoms of chronic exhibitionism. Ambidexterity is also latent. He is prematurely bald from self-abuse, perversely idealistic in consequence, a reformed rake, and has metal teeth. I have made a pervaginal examination, and after application of the acid test to anal, axillary, pectoral, and pubic hairs, I declare him to be Virgo intacta. Professor Bloom is a finished example of the new womanly man. His moral nature is both simple and lovable. Many have found him to be a dear man, a dear person. He's a rather quaint fellow on the whole, coy, though not feeble-minded in the medical sense. Another report stated he was a very posthumous child. I appeal for clemency. In the name of the most sacred word, our vocal organs have ever been called upon to speak. He is about to have a baby. Oh, Oh, I do so want to have a baby. Bloom, are you the Messiah? You said it. Then perform a miracle. Prophesy. 
Throw away. Gold Cup race, 20 to 1. All insanity, patriotism, and sorrow for the dead must now cease. Huh. Talk away till you're black in the face. I suppose you got up on the wrong side of the bed or came too quick with your best girl. Oh, I can read your thoughts. Man and woman, love. What is it? A cork and bottle. I hate a rotter that's insincere. Give a bleeding whore a chance. <laughs> I'm very disagreeable. And you are a necessary evil. Where are you from, London? I'm Yorkshire-born. I say, Tommy Chittlemouth, stop that and begin worse. Have you cashed for a short time? Ten shillings? More temptress, more. And Moore's mother. Come and I'll peel off. You know, someone would be dreadfully jealous if she knew. Boys, do it now. Tell mother you'll be there. Join on right here. Book through to eternity junction. A non-stop run. Are you a god or a doggone clod? If the second coming came to Coney Island, are we ready? It's up to you to sense that cosmic force. Have we cold feet about the cosmos? No! Be on the side of the angels! No! Testify! I forgot myself. In a weak moment, I erred and did what I did on Constitution Hill. It was a working plumber was my ruination when I was pure. It was in consequence of a port wine beverage on top of Hennessy's three stars. I was guilty with Whelan when he slipped into bed. I let him lollop it into me for the fun of it. In the beginning was the word. In the end, the world without end. Blessed be the eight Beatitudes. Who's got a fag? Here. Will you sing us something? Love's old sweet song. No voice. I am a most finished artist. I think you're a spoiled priest. Beg? That's a good doggy bear. <laughs> <laughs> you too. <laughs> My word, I'm all of a muck sweat. Too tight? If you bungle, Handy Andy, I'll kick your football for you. Awaiting your further orders, we remain, gentlemen. Hound of dishonor. Empress. Adorer of the adulterous rump. Hugeness. Dung devourer. Magnificence. Dull. Incline foot forward. Slide left foot. One pace back. You are falling on the handstone. Truffles. Feel my entire weight. Bow, bond slave, before your death. Oh, I promise never to disobey. <laughs> Holy smoke. You little know what's in store for you. <laughs> I'm the charter to settle your little lot and break you in. <laughs> She's not here. She's not here. She didn't mean it, Mr. Bellow. She'll be a good girl. Don't be hard on her, Mr. Bellow. Sure you won't. Come, oh, no. Jackie, dear, I want a little word with you, darling. Just to administer correction. Just a little heart-to-heart oh. -heart talk, sweetie. There's a good girlie now. I only want to correct you for your own good on a soft, safe spot. How's that tender behind you? Oh. Ever so gently, pet. Begin to get ready. Oh, don't care, my... You're in for it this time. I'll make you remember me for the balance of your natural life. It will hurt oh. you. Oh, don't be cruel, nurse. Don't. Oh, oh tell itself. Good. Here, don't keep me waiting. Damn you! Oh, oh, you hit me, I'll tell. Hold them down, girls, till I squat on them. Yes, oh, I will. I will. No. Oh, lend him to me. No, me. I see Guinness Brewery's preference shares are up 16 three quarters. 
curse me for a fool that I didn't buy that lot. And that goddamned outsider throwaway ran home at 20 to 1. Where's that goddamn cursed ashtray? <laughs> oh, oh, monster, a oh, cruel one. <laughs> Gee up! Ride the cock horse! Ho! Up! We put it. Say, what was the most revolting piece of obscenity in all your career of crime? <laughs> the sins of the past are rising against you. He went through a form of clandestine marriage in the shadow of the black church. Unspeakable messages he telephoned mentally while he presented himself indecently to the instrument in the ball box. In five public conveniences, he penciled messages offering his nuptial partner to all strong-membered males. Oh, I've been a perfect pig. Animus, too, I've administered. Up the fundament with Hamilton Long's syringe, the lady's friend. Oh, get out, you skunk. Hold your tongue. Can you do a man's job? I wouldn't hurt your feelings, but there's a man of brawn in possession there. I'm indecently treated. Inform the police. Would if you could, lame duck. A downpour we want, not your drizzle. Ah, oh, Bloom, Mrs. Bloom, up yet? Here. Get yourself a gin and splash. Show me in. I have some business with your wife, understand? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Madam Bloom is in her bath. Raoul, darling, come and dry me. I mean, me pelt. Only me new hat and a carriage sponge. <sighs> Topping. Let him look. Pimp. And scourge himself. You can apply your eye to the keyhole and play with yourself while I just go through her a few times. Thank you, sir. I will, sir. Um, Vaseline, sir. Orange flower. Lukewarm water. Oh, he simply idolizes her. Yum, yum. Oh, look. He's carrying her around the room, doing it. Show, hide, show, flower, more, shoot. Here, this isn't a musical peep show. And don't you smash that piano. Who's paying here? Who's paying here, I said. Here. We're all in the same sweepstake. Daedalus, give her your blessing for me. She has it. You want three girls. It's ten shillings here. A hundred thousand apologies. Pardon, we'll flatter me back. Allow me. Three times ten for square. You're a sly boots, old cocky. I could kiss you. Here, this is yours. How's that? Look, I think you better hand over the rest of your cash for me to take care of. I mean, why pay more? Be just before you are generous. Yes, I will. But is it wise? Right, I don't answer for what you may have lost. It doesn't matter a rambling down. Look. Our friend. Noise in the street. Yorkshire girl, that's me. Let's dance. My girls say Yorkshire girl. Yorkshire through and through. Oh, 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 oh. My girls are Yorkshire girls. La 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 I was once the beautiful May Golding Daedalus. I am dead. Who are you? What bogeyman's trick is this? Oh, the mockery of it. She kicked the bucket. All must go through it, Stephen. You too. Time will come. They say I killed you, Mother. He offended your memory. Cancer did it. Not I. Destiny. You sang that song to me. Love's bitter mystery. Tell me the word, Mother, if you know now. The word known to all men. Who had pity on you when you were sad among the strangers? Prayer is all-powerful. Repent, Stephen. Ghoul. Hyena. I pray for you. Get Dilly to make you that boiled rice every night after your brain work. Years and years I loved you, my son. My firstborn, when you lay in my womb. It's hot, I'm melting. Look, he's white. 
He's just giddy. I'll open the window. Repent. Oh, the fire of hell. Corpse chewer. Raw head and bloody bones. Beware. Beware God's hand. Shut! Give him some cold water. Oh, sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on Stephen. Save him from hell, O oh, divine sacred heart. No. No, no. Break my spirit, all of you, if you can. I'll bring you all to heal. Have mercy on Stephen, Lord, for my sake. Inexpressible was my anguish when expiring with love, grief, and agony among Calvary. No, no! Shillings. Ten shillings? Didn't you lift enough off them already? Here, yeah, none of your tall talk. This isn't a brothel. It's a ten shilling house. There's not sixpence worth of damage done. You. Was he insulting you? I addressed her in the vocative feminine. I was in company with the soldiers and they left me to, you know, and the young man ran up behind me. But I'm faithful to the man that's treating me, although I'm a ten shilling whore. Fair from one, Harry. Was he insulting you? Call me and him was having a piss. There's not a reason why. I was with the private. Why not? The bold soldier boy. So how would it be if I was to bash your jaw in? Huh? Very unpleasant. Noble art of self-pretense. Personally, I detest action. Come on now, Professor. I can't man. wait. What were you saying? Say that again. I understand your point of view. You die for your country, I suppose. Well, I say let my country die for me. After the present, it has done so. Damn death. Long live life. Hey, Harry, give him a kick in the knackers. Uh, look, he doesn't know what he's saying. He's had a little more to drink than is good for him. I know him well. He's a, he's a gentleman and a poet. I couldn't give a bugger who he is. We couldn't give a bugger who he is. We said nothing, not a word. It's, it's just a misunderstanding. Go with Harry. Do him one in the eye. I'll do him in. Look, stand back, will you? Give me plenty of room, will you? Fair play here. Get back. Make a bleeding butcher shop of that bugger. They're going to fight for me. Come on now, before the fight starts. Oh, come on. You're boozed. Look, he insulted me, but I forgive him. I forgive him for insulting me. I'll insult him. Get back. Stand back. Here, Harry, bugger off. There's the cops. What's wrong here? Now leave him to me, I can easily... I don't want your instructions in the discharge of my duty. What's his name? He's uh, Simon Dedalus, son. <laughs> He's a bit sprung. Won a bit in the races today. A throwaway, 20 to 1. Do you follow me? Oh, I can take care of him, Sergeant. We're often as bad ourselves, huh? I suppose so. I mean, boys will be boys. I see he gets home. Come on. Uh, oh. Mr. Dedalus. Stephen. Stephen. Who? The face reminds me of his poor mother. Rudy. Returning, they deliberate on music. Literature, Ireland, Paris, friendship, woman, prostitution, diet, and the Roman Catholic Church. Did Bloom discover common factors of similarity between their respective like and unlike reactions to experience? Both are sensitive to artistic impressions, musical in preference to plastic or pictorial. Both profess their disbelief in many orthodox religions, national, social and ethical doctrines. What action did Bloom make on their arrival at their destination? At the house steps of the fourth are the equidifferent uneven numbers number seven, Eccles Street. He inserted his hand mechanically into his trousers to obtain his latch key. Was it there? It was in the corresponding pocket of the trousers which he had worn on the day but one preceding. Why was he doubly irritated? Because he'd forgotten and because he remembered that he had reminded himself twice not to forget. Which seemed to the host to be the predominant qualities of his guest? Confidence in himself. An equal and opposite power of abandonment and recuperation. His mood? He had not risked. He did not expect. He had not been disappointed. He was satisfied. 
satisfied to have sustained no positive loss, to have brought a positive gain to others. Light to the Gentiles. What lines concluded his first piece of original verse written by him, potential poet at the age of 11, on the occasion of the offering of three prizes at 10 shillings, 5 shillings, and 2 and 6 respectively by the Shamrock, a weekly newspaper? An ambition to squint at my verses and print makes me hope that for these you'll find room. If you so condescend, then please place at the end the name of yours truly, L. Bloom. Did either allude to their racial difference? Neither. What, reduced to their simplest reciprocal form, were Bloom's thoughts about Stephen's thoughts about Bloom, and Bloom's thoughts about Stephen's thoughts about Bloom's thoughts about Stephen. He thought that he thought that he was a Jew, whereas he knew that he knew that he knew that he was not. Why did Bloom refrain from stating that he had frequented the University of Life? Because of his fluctuating incertitude as to whether his observation had or had not already been made by him to Stephen, or by Stephen to him. What two temperaments did they individually represent? The scientific, the artistic. What is home without plum trees potted meat? Incomplete. With it an abode of bliss. Which domestic problem as much as, if not more than, any other frequently engaged his mind? What to do with our wives? Bloom proposes that Stephen pass and repose the hours between tonight and tomorrow in the apartment immediately above the kitchen and immediately adjacent to the sleeping apartment of his host and hostess. Various advantages may result from a prolongation of this arrangement. For Stephen, security of domicile and seclusion of study. For Bloom, rejuvenation of intelligence, vicarious satisfaction. For Molly, disintegration of obsession acquisition of Stephen's correct pronunciation of Italian. Is the proposal of asylum accepted? Promptly, inexplicably, with amicability, gratefully, it is declined. What spectacle confronted them when they, first the guest, then the host, emerged silently, doubly dark, from obscurity by a passage from the rear of the house, into the penumbra of the garden. The heaven tree of stars hung with humoured night blue fruit. Both then were silent. Silent. Each contemplating the other in both mirrors of the reciprocal flesh. Other his not his. Fellow faces. The trajections of their first sequent, then simultaneous urinations were dissimilar. Bloom's longer, less eruent. Stephen's higher, more sibilant, who in the ultimate hours of the previous day had augmented by diuretic consumption an insistent vesicle pressure. Alone, what did Bloom hear? The double reverberation of retreating feet on the heaven-born earth, the double vibration of a Jew's harp, in the resonant lane. Alone, Bloom feels the cold of interstellar space, the incipient intimation of proximate dawn. What imperfections in a perfect day did Bloom, walking silently, successively enumerate? A provisional failure to obtain renewal of an advertisement, to certify the presence or absence of posterior rectal orifice in the case of Hellenic female divinities. In replying to his wife's nocturnal interrogation, Bloom omits mention of the public altercation at, in and around the licensed premises of Barney Kiernan. The erotic provocation and response thereto caused by the exhibitionism of a young lady and includes mention of a volume of pecaminous pornographical tendency entitled Sweets of Sin. Bloom's acts? Prudently, 
as entering a lair or ambush of lust or adder, lightly, the less to disturb. Reverently, the bed of conception and of birth, of consummation of marriage and of breach of marriage, of sleep and death. What did his limbs, when gradually extended, encounter? New bed linen, additional odors, the presence of a human form, female, hers. The imprint of a human form, male, not his. Some crumbs, some flakes of potted meat, recooked, which he removed. What were his reflections concerning the last occupant of the bed? Reflections on his vigor, a bounder, corporal proportion, a bill sticker, commercial ability, a bester, impressionability, a boaster. Which person emerges as the salient point of his narration? Stephen Dedalus, professor and author. During the course of this increasingly laconic narration, both narrator and listener recall to mind certain limitations on their conjugal compatibility, inasmuch as complete carnal intercourse with ejaculation of semen within the natural female organ has not taken place for 10 years, 5 months, and 18 days, not since 5 weeks previous to the birth and death of their only male issue, Rudolph Bloom, Jr., aged 11 days. The child man weary, the man child in the womb, womb weary, he rests. He has traveled with Sinbad the sailor and Tinbad the tailor and Jinbad the jailer and Ninbad the nailer and Winbad the whaler and Yes, because he never did a thing like that before, as asked to get his breakfast in bed with a couple of eggs. Get his breakfast? Yes, he came somewhere, I'm sure, by his appetite. Anyway, love it's not, or he'd be off his feet thinking of her. It's some little bitch or other he's got in with somewhere. If he only knew him as well as I do. Somebody who thinks she has a softy in him. Because all men get a bit like that. So as to wheedle any money she can out of him. No fool like an old fool. And then the usual kissing my bottom was to hide it. Not that I care two straws who he does it with. Though I'd like to find out. So long as I don't have the two of them under my nose all the time. Like that slut. That Mary we had padding out her false bottom to excite him. One woman is not enough for them. I wouldn't lower myself to spy on them. Yes, because he couldn't possibly do without it that long, so he must do it somewhere. Simply ruination for any woman. No satisfaction in it. Pretending to like it till he comes and then finish it off myself anyway. And it makes your lips pale. Anyhow, it's done now, once and for all. With all the talk of the world about it people make, it's only the first time. After that, it's just the ordinary do it and think no more about it. Why can't you kiss a man without going and marrying him? First, you sometimes love to, wildly. When you feel that way so nice all over you, you can't help yourself. There's nothing like a kiss long and hot down to your soul almost paralyzes you. Then I hate that confession when I used to go to Father Corrigan. He touched me, Father. Of what harm if he did? Where? And I sit on the canal bank like a fool. But whereabouts on your person, my child? On the leg behind. High up, was it? Yes, rather high up. Was it where you sit down? Yes. 
Oh, Lord, couldn't he say bottom right out and have done with it? What has that got to do with it? And did you, whatever way he put it, I forget, no father. And I always think of the real father. What does he want to know for when I already confess to God? I wondered, did he know me in the box? I could see his face. He couldn't see mine. Of course, he'd never turn or, or let on. They're lost for a woman, of course. I wonder, was he satisfied with me? One thing I didn't like, his slapping me behind, going away so familiarly in the hall. Though I laughed, I'm not a horse or an ass, am I? I wonder, is he awake thinking of me? Or dreaming? Am I in it? We took the port and potted meat. It had a fine, salty taste. Yes, because I felt lovely and tired myself. Fell asleep the moment I popped straight into bed. This damned old bed, too, jingling like the dickens. I suppose they could hear us away over the other side of the park. Till I suggested to put the quilt on the floor with a pillow under my bottom. Till that thunder, like those awful thunderbolts in Gibraltar. And they come and tell you there's no God. He'd scoff if he heard, because he never goes to church, mass or meeting. He says, your soul, you have no soul inside, only grey matter. Because he doesn't know what it is to have one. Yes, because he must have come three or four times with that tremendous big red brute of a thing he has. Though his nose is not so big. After I took off all my things with the blinds down, after my hours dressing and perfuming and combing it, like iron or some kind of a thick crowbar standing all the time. He must have eaten oysters. I think a few dozen. He was in great singing voice. Oh, I never in all my life felt anyone had one the size of that to make you feel full up. What's the idea making us like that with a big hole in the middle of us? Like a stallion driving it up into you because that's all they want out of you with that determined, vicious look in his eye. I had half shut my eyes. Still, he hasn't such a tremendous amount of spunk in him when I made him pull it out and do it on me, considering how big it is. So much the better in case any of it wasn't washed out properly. The last time I let him finish it in me. Nice invention they made for women, for him to get all the pleasure. But if someone gave them a touch of it themselves, they'd know what I went through with Rudy and Minna Purefoy's husband filling her up with a child or twins once a year, as regular as the clock, not satisfied until they have us swollen out like elephants. What could you make of a man like that? I'd rather die 20 times over than marry another of their sex. Of course, he'd never find another woman like me to put up with in the way I do. I liked the way he made love then. He knew the way to take a woman. When he sent me the eight big poppies, because mine was the eighth. But he never knew how to embrace well, like Gardner. I looked a bit washy, of course, when I looked close in the hand glass, powdering. Mirror never gives you the expression. Besides, scrooching down on me like that all the time with his big hip bones. He's heavy, too, with his hairy chest for this heat. Always having to lie down for them. Better for him put it into me from behind, the way Mrs. Mastiansky told me her husband made her, like the dogs do it. Then stick out her tongue as far as ever she could. Can you ever be up to men the way it takes them? But he was like a perfect devil for a few minutes after he came back with the stop press, tearing up the tickets, swearing blazes because he'd lost 20 quid, he said. He lost over that outsider that won. And half he put on for me. In any case, if it's going to go on, I want at least two other good chemises, for one thing. And But I don't know what kind of drawers he likes. None at all, I think. Didn't he say? Yes. And half the girls in Gibraltar never wore them either. Naked as God made them. 
that Andalusian singing her Manola. She didn't make much secret of what she hadn't. Yes. What are all those veins and things? Curious the way it's made. Two the same in case of twins. They're supposed to represent beauty placed up there, like those statues in the museum. One of them pretending to hide it with her hand. How are they so beautiful? Well, of course, compared with what a man looks like with his two bags full and his other thing hanging down out of him or sticking up at you like a hat rack. No wonder they hide it with a cabbage leaf. The woman is beauty, of course, that's admitted. I wonder they're not afraid going about of getting a kick or a bang or something there. I declare somebody ought to put him in the budget. If I only could remember the one half of the things and write a book out of it. The works of Master Poldy. All the pleasure those men get out of a woman. I can feel his mouth. Oh, Lord, I must stretch myself. She was here, or somebody to let myself go with and come again like that. I feel all fire inside me. Or if I could dream it, when he made me spend the second time tickling me behind with his finger. I was coming for about five minutes with my legs round him. I had to hug him after. Oh, Lord, I wanted to shout out all sorts of things, fuck or shit or anything at all. Only not to look ugly. Or those lines from the strain. Who knows the way he'd take it? You want to feel your way with a man. <laughs> They're not all like him, thank God. Some of them want you to be so nice about it. I notice the contrast. He does it and doesn't talk. I gave my eyes that look with my hair a bit loose from the tumbling and my tongue between my lips up to him, a savage brute. Oh, thanks be to the great God, I got somebody to give me what I badly wanted, to put some heart up into me. You've no chances at all in this place like you used to long ago. I wish somebody would write me a love letter. True or no, it fills up your whole day and life. Always something to think about every moment and see it all around you, like a new world. I could write the answer in bed, short, just a few words. I never thought that would be my name, Bloom. Well, it's better than those awful names with bottom in them. Mrs. Ram's bottom, or some other kind of a bottom. That train again weeping tone. Once in the dear dead days beyond recall. Close my eyes, breathe, my lips forward, kiss, sad look, eyes open, piano. Air o'er the world, the east begun. I hate that East speaker. Comes love, sweet song. I let that out full when I get in front of the footlights again. Kathleen Kearney and a lot of squealers. A lot of sparrow farts skidding around talking about politics. They know as much about as my backside. I suppose she's pious because no man will look at her twice. Gardner said no man could look at my mouth and teeth smiling like that and not think of it. I was afraid he mightn't like my accent at first. All father left me. I had my mother's eyes and figure anyhow. He was dead gone on my lips. Huh. Let them get a husband first that's fit to be looked at. Or see if they can excite a swell with money that can pick and choose whoever he wants like Boylan. To do it four or five times locked in each other's arms. Or the voice, either. I could have been a prima donna. Only I married him. Comes love's hold. Deep down, chin back. Not too much. Make it double. 
make them burst with envy. Anyway, I hope he's not going to get in with those medicals, leading him astray to imagine he's young again, squandering money and getting drunker and drunker. Couldn't they drink water? I love to hear him falling up the stairs of a morning with the cops rattling on the tray. And then he starts giving us his orders for eggs and tea and hot buttered toast. I suppose there isn't in all creation another man with the habits he has. It's well he doesn't kick or he might knock out all my teeth. Wait, there's George's church. Well, that's a nice hour of the night for him to be coming home at to anybody. First, I look at his shirt to see. Or I'll see if he has that French letter still in his pocketbook. I suppose he thinks I don't know. Deceitful men. All their 20 pockets aren't enough for their lies. And why should we tell them? Even if it's the truth, they don't believe you. There's not another thing in their empty heads. So they ought to get slow poison, the half of them. Then tea and toast for him, buttered on both sides and new laid eggs. He's such a born liar, too. No, he'd never have the courage with a married woman. Though as for her, Dennis, as she calls him, that forlorn-looking spectacle you couldn't call him a husband. <laughs> yes, it's some little bitch he's got in with. He says he's an author and going to be a university professor of Italian, and I'm to take lessons. What is he driving at now, showing him my photo? It's not good of me. Still, I look young in it. I wonder you didn't make him a present of it altogether. And me, too, after all. Why not? I was in mourning. That's 11 years ago now. Yes. He'd be 11. Though it was the good in going into mourning, what was neither one thing nor the other. Of course, he insisted he'd go into mourning for the cat. I suppose he's a man now by this time. He was an innocent boy then, and a darling little fellow. He liked me too, I remember. They all do. Wait, by God. Yes, wait, yes, hold on. He was on the cars this morning when I laid out the deck. Union with a younger stranger, neither dark nor fair, you met before. I thought it meant him. But he's no chicken nor a stranger either. They all write about some woman in their poetry. Well, I suppose you won't find many like me. Where softly sighs of love the light guitar, where poetry is in the air. I'm sure he's very distinguished. I'd like to meet a man like that. God, not those other rock. Besides, he's young. Those fine young men I could see down in Margaret Strand bathing place from the side of the rock standing up in the sun, naked like a god or something, and then plunging into the sea with them. Why aren't all men like that? There'd be some consolation for a woman. Like that lovely little statue he bought. I could look at him all day long. There's real beauty and poetry for you. I often felt I wanted to kiss him all over. Also his lovely young cock there, so simply. I wouldn't mind taking him in my mouth if nobody was looking, as it was asking you to suck it. So clean and white he looked with his boyish face. I would, too, in half a minute, even if some of it went down. But it's only like a gruel or the dew. There's no danger. Besides, he'd be so clean compared with those pigs of men, I suppose. Never dream of washing it from one year's end to the other, the most of them. Only that's what gives the women the moustaches. I'm sure it'll be grand if I can only get in with a handsome young poet at my age. I'll throw them the first thing in the morning till I see if the wish card comes out. I'll read and study all I can find or learn a bit off by heart. If I knew who he likes so he won't think me stupid if he thinks all women are the same. Now I can teach him the other part. I'll make him feel all over him till he half faints under me. Then he'll write about me lover and mistress publicly, too. 
with our two photographs in all the papers when he becomes famous. Oh, but then what am I going to do about him, though? It's all very well a husband, but you can't fool a lover. No, that's no way for him. Has he no manners, no, no refinement, no, no nothing in his nature? Slapping us behind like that on me bottom because I didn't call him Hugh. The ignoramus doesn't know poetry from a cabbage. That's what you get for not keeping them in their proper place. Pulling off his shoes and trousers there on the chair before me so barefaced without even asking permission and standing out that vulgar way in the half of a shirt they wear to be admired. Of course, he's right enough in his way to pass the time as a joke. Sure, you might as well be in bed with what? With a lion. God, I'm sure he'd have something better to say for himself an old lion would. Oh, well, I suppose it's because they were so plump and tempting in my short petticoat he couldn't resist. They excite myself sometimes. It's well for men all the amount of pleasure they get off a woman's body. We're so round and white for them always. I wished I was one myself for a change. Just a try with that thing they have swelling upon you so hard and at the same time so soft when you touch it. Men again all over. They can pick and choose what they please. A married woman or a fast widow or a girl for their different tastes. No, but we're to be always chained up. They're not going to be chaining me up, no damn fear. Once I start, I tell you, for stupid husbands, jealousy. Why can't we all remain friends over it instead of quarreling? What else were we given all those desires for, I'd like to know. I can't help it if I'm young still, can I? It's a wonder I'm not an old shriveled hag before my time, living with him so cold, never embracing me except sometimes when he's asleep. The wrong end of me, not knowing, I suppose, who he has. Any man that would kiss a woman's bottom, I'd throw my hat at him. After that, he'd kiss anything unnatural where we haven't one atom of any kind of expression in us. All of us the same two lumps of lard. Before I ever do that to a man. Phew, the dirty brutes. The mere thought is enough. I kiss the feet of you, senorita. There's a madman. Nobody understands his cracked ideas but me. Still, of course, a woman wants to be embraced 20 times a day, almost to make her look young, no matter by who, so long as to be in love or loved by somebody. If the fellow you want isn't there, sometimes, by the Lord God, I was thinking, would I go around by the keys there some dark evening where nobody would know me and pick up a sailor off the sea that would be hot on for it and not care a pin who I was, only to do it off up in a gate somewhere. One of those... Wild-looking gypsies in Rathfarnham, that blackguardly-looking fellow with the fine eyes peeling the switch, attack me in the dark, ride me up against the wall without a word, or a murderer, anybody. Only, I suppose, the half of those sailors are rotten again with disease. Oh, move over your big carcass out of that for the love of Mike. The winds that waft my sighs to thee. So well he may sleep and sigh. The great suggester, Don Polda de la Flora. And I'm to be slooching around down in the kitchen to get his lordship his breakfast while he's rolled up like a mummy. Will I indeed? Did you ever see me running? I'd just like to see myself at it. Show them attention, they treat you like dirt. I don't care what anybody says. It would be much better for the world to be governed by the women in it. You wouldn't see women going and killing one another and slaughtering. Well, it's a poor case that those that have a fine son like that are not satisfied. But I none. Was he not able to make one? It wasn't my fault. We came together when I was watching the two dogs up in her behind in the middle of the naked street. That disheartened me altogether. 
I suppose I wouldn't have buried him in that little woolly jacket I knitted, crying as I was. I'd give it to some poor child. But I knew well I'd never have another. Our first death, too, it was. You were never the same since. Well, I'm not going to think myself into the glooms about that anymore. I wonder why he wouldn't stay the night. Ruining himself for life, perhaps. Still, it's a lovely hour. So silent. I mind to tell him every scrap. Serve him right. It's all his own fault if I'm an adulteress. Oh, much about it, if that's all the harm ever we did in this veil of tears. God knows it's not much. Doesn't everybody, only they hide it. I suppose that's what a woman is supposed to be there for. Or he wouldn't have made us the way he did, so attractive to men. As for them saying there's no God, I wouldn't give a snap of my two fingers for all their learning. Why don't they go and create something? Then they go howling for the priest and they dying. And why? Why? Because they're afraid of hell on account of their bad conscience. Ah, yes, I know them well. Who was the first person in the universe before there was anybody that made it all? Who? Ah, that they don't know. Neither do I, so there you are. They might as well try to stop the sun from rising tomorrow. The sun shines for you, he said, the day we were lying among the rhododendrons on Hoth Head. In the grey tweed suit and his straw hat, the day I got him to propose to me, yes. First I gave him the bit of seed cake out of my mouth, and it was leap year, like now, yes. Sixteen years ago. My God. After that long kiss, I near lost my breath. Yes. So we have flowers, all. A woman's body. Yes. That was one true thing he said in his life. And the sun shines for you today. Yes. That was why I liked him, because I saw he understood or felt what a woman is. And I knew I could always get round him, and I gave him all the pleasure I could. Leading him on till he asked me to say yes. And I wouldn't answer first, only looked out over the sea and sky. Oh, that awful deep down torrent. Oh, and the sea, the sea crimson sometimes like fire. And the glorious sunsets and the fig trees in the Alameda Gardens, yes. And all the queer little streets and pink and blue and yellow houses and the rose gardens and the jessamine and geraniums and cactuses and Gibraltar as a girl where I was a flower of the mountain, yes. And I put the rose in my hair like the Andalusian girls used. Or shall I wear a red, yes. And how he kissed me under the Moorish wall. And I thought, well, as well him as another. And then I asked him with my eyes to ask again, yes. And then he asked me, would I, yes, to say, yes, my mountain flower. And first I put my arms around him, yes. And drew him down to me so he could feel my breasts, all perfume, yes. And his heart was going like mad. And yes, I said, yes, I will, yes. 